Well, hello everyone. Welcome to our Sunday night Radical Geek Coffee Talk. Yes, I started it just a couple minutes early. I'm still using StreamYard and trying to get used to it a little bit. You know, I still don't have the whole intro on hold thing going. But I do see that we have Sharon here reminding everybody, make sure you give a thumbs up to our live streams. Uh, Carrie is here. Uh, oh, congratulations. Happy uh, no coffee anniversary. And I didn't know that, but we're celebrating. We're not having coffee. We're going to have tea. So let's see. Uh, and our amazing moderators, Attila. Uh, I'm sure our friend Auntie will be here very shortly if she's not already. Let's see, Carrie's got uh, some hellos back and forth. Uh, congratulations. Hey, Brenda. Uh, let's see, Brenda has joined us. Oh, there, there's Air Fry and Andy. And Hungry Heath, hey, yo. And Mama Bear Lynette. Uh, good evening, love cream soups. So there's some caveats here. Technically, there's no cream in this soup unless you count coconut cream. But uh, we'll get to that as we cook. Oh, hey, Jennifer Lucas, nice to see you. And uh, Rocky Mountain Girl, wow, look at all the awesome. Oh, and Barely Begun, good to see you as well. Marion Roberts, well, all these awesome people here. I just love seeing you guys. So I've cheated a little bit tonight because, you know, we like to go to bed early on Sunday night. So I started my soup, oh, and everything is just perfect over here in the pan. What I have done here is I put my uh, cut up bacon. It is thick, thick, thick sliced uh, peppered bacon and my one medium onion. And I just browned it all up. The, the, uh, the onions are like on that super caramelized, almost burnt, but not, not burnt, you know, where they get that delicious extra caramely oniony uh, toastiness. So the other things we have for that, when you see how nice and easy this is, you're gonna be blown away. So you saute your bacon and your onion. Here is where there is uh, there are options for you. If you want a smooth, very thick and creamy soup, at this point, you should take all of this out of the pan and then put this other stuff that I'm gonna add in because you'll wanna cook it for a while and then blend it, then add this back in. I, however, have found that uh, texturally, that's not my favorite preference. So I'm going for a uh, more textured, uh, slightly thinner soup. And so I'm gonna leave my stuff in here. And to the pan, we're going to add our grated cauliflower into the pan. And that's, it's one small head of cauliflower Nothing uh, too elaborate. Don't get, if it's the big giant one, you might find that you'll need more broth. Give it a little stir. And that's why I say if you want to blend it, that's, you would take the bacon and onion out. And I am going to leave it with my uh, cauliflower texture to it. Then the important thing to add is our leeks. So these leeks are lightly, are shaved into little uh, pieces. If you want to know what I started out with, if you are not familiar with leeks, they look like this. Uh, usually there's a big uh, hairy bottom, just like a green onion, only super giant. Uh, but for some reason, Fresh Time is really fond of trimming the bottoms of our vegetables for us for, I don't know why. You still got to cut the bottom off, so I don't know, maybe it's more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, and we'll talk about these leeks some more as we get cooking. So welcome, I see Rickwin has joined us and Gigi's here. Lovely to see you. So, hey, uh, Hungry Heath and the Warden, I know that you guys usually are making dinner. I'm gonna throw my leeks in here. No, it seems like a lot of leeks. I mean, like, and you should know that leeks have kind of an oniony flavor to them, but very mild. So if you think of like the most mild green onion that you've ever eaten, and then add like a little bit of nuttiness to it, that's your leeks. So you can see my pot is quite full of all of this lovely stuff. And we will take our time as it simmers to talk about all of these ingredients and why they're so important. And 
why this is an excellent soup for ketogenic people. Uh, obviously, it's not a carnivore dish, but you know, what can I say? Lots of hellos back and forth. Uh, uh, Carrie says, I'll need lots of bowls for the leeks. So I'm just going to get this uh, stirred up and combined. And then I'm going to sprinkle in my generous salt and pepper. It's just salt and pepper, Redmond salt and plain old black peppercorns all ground up. That's it. So let's see, give it another little stir to kind of get the, the salt and pepper going. At its core, it's a very simple dish, but the flavor becomes very complex. So, and then check it out, you guys. Chicken bone broth. You guys, do you strain your bone broth? I do not. And that's okay because it tastes delicious. But you did, but uh, yeah. So we're almost on our way with this soup. Now we just got to bump up the heat a little bit. We'll give it a stir every so often. And it just has to simmer. So really the big imposition on this was the initial cook of the bacon. You might, you could maybe add more broth, but the cook of the bacon and the slicing of the leeks and the uh, grating of the cauliflower. And of course you have to cut up one onion. Oh, you know, so, so there's a lot of cutting of things, but it doesn't take that long. And ultimately it's not that hard. So, but we'll let this uh, come temp, I'm trying to see my thing yet. Yeah, I'm going to leave it here and this just has to cook down. And it'll come to a good uh, hearty simmer. I want to make sure. Sometimes the skillet gets really hot, so I want to make sure that I don't have it too hot and burn. And then I'll come over here. We'll do some comments. We'll get our my tea going, and then we can start talking nerd things. So, but this is the initial assembly of the soup. So and you can see what I mean about if you just took the cauliflower and the broth and, and blended that together, how it would become a very uh, thick, thick, thick. And I like stuff. So that's, a, that's just an option. So let's talk about just tucking stuff into the broth a little bit. Kind of wish there was a, just threw cauliflower at myself. I kind of wish there was a way for me to like tilt this so you could uh, get a good view of it looking all nice in there. But, you know, it's a big pan full of broth. So, but there you go. That's how it looks. Uh, okay. I don't want to spill it over. Let's see. What do we got here? Okay. Lots of hellos, hellos, hellos. Uh, Barely Begun says it looks good now. Just add sauce. But he's not a huge soup fan. Oh, I, I am a soup fan, man. I would eat soup every day and often do. Uh, even in the summer, I eat a lot of soup. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Oh, okay, hellos, hellos. Uh, oh, Sharon says she's finally on her computer and not the iPad tonight. Uh, Air Friday Annie says, nice. Uh, she got to watch and chat at the same time. Excellent. Uh, Hungry Heath says, uh, dinner tonight, they've got, uh, they had a chili con queso plus homemade cracklins that the neighbor delivered. Oh, my God, that sounds amazing. Hey, have any of you ordered those pork pellets to make your own? You just stick them in the air fryer? I've been thinking about it, but honestly, it's just so much to place an order. I mean, it's a large quantity, and I don't know that I can eat that many. Like, I need to find a couple local people to split it with or something. Uh, let's see. Uh, Carrie says he bets that uh, my my bone broth is humorous. Oh my, that's a good one. That's like the greatest one we've seen in a while. I mean, your jokes are always funny, but that was extra funny to me. Air Fryer Nancy says she does not strain her bone broth, but she's lazy and she buys it. Well, that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, more hellos, hellos. Mama Bear Lynette says she does not drain her bone broth. How much bone broth do you use? Um, I put the measurements in and uh, four cups. 
a give or take on how um, how brothy you want it. Uh, you need enough to kind of uh, make sure that everything can get into the broth. So I I have about five cups total liquid because I'll be adding in my uh, coconut milk as well. It's happening, you guys. It's happening. My soup. So I will come over here and make sure I'm giving it a stir so it doesn't burn on the bottom or anything like that. But... Uh, I will tell you guys that I've added the bone broth and the bacon and stuff, but this used to be at one point in time a don't 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 gasp beacon recipe. I had a, I used to have vegetable stock and no bacon, and I'm just telling you that the bacon bumps it up like you would not believe. Let's see. Anyways. So I'm gonna set this aside. So this is the leek. Now with the leek, uh, there's a, like I said, it, it's it's in the same family as scallions and green onions. Let's see, this says there's new comments. Hunger, he says there's a mouse on the countertop. Oh, ha ha. <laughs> Just so nobody freaks out on the internet. <laughs> it's my, it's this mouse, which I need. So anyways, as you can see, it's pretty sizable. Unfortunately, I don't have a green onion to put side by side, but significantly larger. Uh, with the leeks, and just, you know, I have this extra leek. I'm not worried about it. I have two more because later in the week, once we've eaten through some of the food we have, I'm making a leek, bacon, uh, and a cheesy frittata for our meals. So delicious. But uh, they're high in vitamin A, vitamin K, and they have, they're a, it's, a, it's high in fiber. It's a prebiotic soluble fiber. So super, super good for your gut health, which I think we all love on this channel. Gut health is really nice. We're into that, right? So uh, if you're into fermenting, fermented leeks are amazing. Like, oh my gosh. Um, you know, like, and pickled leeks are also really good, like with your barbecue and stuff, have them on the side, sort of like the pickled red onions, but leeks instead. Man, I'm just telling you, they have a lot of uses. But one of the things that I really like, and it's sort of a theme tonight, is because it's high in vitamin A and K, uh, it's a lovely addition to build into your ketogenic food plan because those are often vitamins that we wind up short on just because uh, by accident, you know, and you don't always remember to do a supplement, you know, they're like, oh, you get everything you need. But let me tell you, it's not always easy. And if you have malabsorption issues or your gut health is not the best or any number of things, uh, being able to know different foods that can uh, power your gut is not a bad thing ever in my in my plan now let's see mama bear says we need to have a video from shelly about pickling and fermenting leeks yes i vote yes get on that the warden so hey mike sandy leeks in a kimchi or over a cabbage could work absolutely leeks in a kimchi would be delightful uh also blended in with cabbage they're also it's they're nice in in slaw as well but you got to make sure that you shave it super super thin and let's see uh rickwin says uh she would have to have a pretty large bag for the chicken what did she do with the bones after the massage oh i don't know i'm missing something somewhere in there no comments uh, let's see uh I saw something about leaks in stock, but anyways, I'm just going to continue on and say, yes. Yeah, so, hey, Mike, Sandy, nice to see you again. Give it a stir. So I know that you not, can't necessarily see on here, but I want you to know, like, everything is doing like vegetables do when they start getting nice and wilted. It's all uh, uh, getting soft and tender. It's going to cook for quite a bit. We want it to go like a good uh, 15 to 20 minutes. You want you want everything to be melted, all those flavors melded together. Uh, 
if you've had uh, Brussels sprouts with bacon and onion, then you know bacon and onion is a magical flavor. And then we've got that cauliflower in there. That's why it's delicious. So uh, anyways, with the leeks. So you will see so much discussion. Eat the tops, don't eat the tops. The tops are bad. Uh, only eat the white part, don't eat the green part. Not even a little bit, eat all the way up until, but so I will tell you, technically they're edible, but from about here up, I'm telling you, it's so fibrous that no matter how much you cook it, it might be edible, but it's not pleasant to eat. So, uh, sear, uh, so cut it off and stick it in a bag, throw it in a cheesecloth and use it to flavor some stocks, but, uh, but then throw it into your compost. Uh, definitely all of the white part is 100% delightful. That's the best part. But what you can do is where it starts turning green, as you're cutting up, it's still really good. And what will happen as, as you are doing your knife cuts, uh, all of a sudden you're gonna get to a spot where your knife doesn't go through and suddenly you have to exert some uh, effort, stop. That's the magic spot where you say, don't need any more of that leak. So I'm gonna set this out of the way. Later, it can go in the fridge. Let's see. We've got here more, more hellos. Let's see, Rickwin says, not sure ADD watched until the end and then just shared it. Okay, I'm, I'm missing something completely. A rotisserie chicken in a Ziploc bag massage to get the bone out. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say it could probably be done, but honestly, that's probably more work than just uh, donning some gloves and tearing it up yourself. Uh, also, the risk of like uh, the bag tearing and uh, then you have chicken juices everywhere. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about this. It's called soup, but really because of all of the stuff in it. I kind of almost liken it more to a stew than a soup, but you know, call it what you will, soup, stews, it's the same, it's the same in my eyes. Uh, I super wish that I had that smarter, uh, you know, you can see, it's not solid, it's, it's juicy, but you can't tell on the camera, what you can tell in the kitchen is it also smells really good let's see oh let's see mama bear says years ago she had a freshly made salad at a friend's house and it was only comprised of very thinly sliced leeks fresh wedges of grapefruit and olive oil it was delightful wow that is interesting i don't have, have grapefruit anymore you guys my tea we forgot the tea ha ah. so marigold and if you're a flower person you might be saying, why can't you open the container, Matreya? What's the matter with you? No. Uh, you might be saying, but Matreya, didn't we do calendula tea? And isn't that the same thing as marigolds? And I'm going to, mm, the smell of these uh, dried marigolds is like heavenly. Okay, that's enough, Matreya. i got to restrain myself. Mm. And the answer is, are they the same as the candela Yes and no, but all I'm doing is I have put my uh, flowers right in there. I've got my water at 194 degrees. I mean, we're making a, a flower based tea, so it's just going to sit here. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of color to the actual tea, and that's fine. It gets a little bit yellowy, but it's hard. You won't be able to tell on the camera. It's going to look like water, but I promise you it's tea. Oh, uh, I just want to get this in here. So the thing is, the calendula and the marigold are often confused as being the same flower. And they are both in the sunflower family. They are both, again, just like our leeks, really good for your gut health because they're high in vitamin A. Uh, the marigolds are high in uh, beta carotene and they have a, uh, a lot of studies in progress that are showing that they help reduce your blood sugar levels. 
So uh, not proven yet, but a heavy theory with a lot of anecdotal evidence, uh, lots of studies in progress with large scale sweeping uh, quantities into human trials now about anti-inflammatory properties. But the important thing is it really tastes good. So there's your marigolds. Now the difference between, which I didn't get to, the marigolds and the calendula, you can sort of see that it's uh, turning golden. I just know that it's hard uh, because I also have a yellow countertop. So it, it always looks like it's not doing anything, but it is, I assure you. So uh, they're different genus, genus. So that's the difference. So they're in the same family and a different genus, same species, but you know, so they're the same, but they're not the same. They're cousins, close cousins, first cousins. And so that is why we delight in our marigold tea. In addition to all of those other things, much like the calendula tea, uh, marigold tea will help you relax, which I don't know about a lot of you, but I tend to get pent up and, you know, every I had like the big major relief that I didn't lose a job, but now I'm digging into the new job and there's a lot of work to do. I mean, a lot. And I'm like, whoa, like drinking from the fire hose. So I have a lot of stress and winding down in the evening has become a little bit harder. So all kinds of stuff there. So while my tea brews. Let's look at this and say, oh, yeah, good to know where to stop. Yeah, I, I thought that was, like, really handy because uh, it's so easy to, like, get too far up into the stem. Uh, and uh, especially if you're of the type who, uh, uh, like me, who, like, gets uh, bent out of shape over, like, waist. Like, you know, I really like to use everything. Uh, it's easy to get carried away. So now you know where to stop and where it becomes uh, unpleasant. Uh, Rocky Mountain Girl, where did I get the marigold flower buds? So I got mine at our international grocery. Uh, you can also, also, I believe they usually have some, well, a lot of Whole Foods carry them or like if you have an Earth Fair, uh, check around, stuff like that. Hey, Keto Simple. Man, I missed you guys this morning, but it was uh, a crazy, crazy morning. So let's see. Oh, <clears throat> and then I forgot the most important thing. Okay, so now a lot of my broth has evaporated. My leeks are translucent. And so we are almost done making the soup. How about that, you guys? Almost done. Almost. Choo, choo, choo. I'm going to stir it some more because I like stirring things. That's a weird thing, but do other people get satisfaction from, like, your, while you're cooking and giving everything a nice stir and double-checking it so that you know it's all awesome? So... Uh, our friend Annie brings up with something that I forgot to mention about the leak. Leaks get dirty. I don't mean for this to be like a big surprise to y'all, but they grow in the dirt and dirt gets inside the leak. Hey, Mike, nice to see you. Oh, you need to leave, but are you using dairy cream or coconut? It's coconut cream. And uh, good news is that all of the ingredients are in the description, or they're supposed to be. So... Uh, we can, and you can always chat me up. We can catch it later. So anyways, but they get dirty. And so you do have to, I recommend you cut your end off and then you, uh, you, uh, cut it down the middle, cut your tops off and you cut it down and you kind of like get in there with the water and your spray, you give it a good spray. And then after you shred it up or you julienne it, or however you get it into teeny tiny bits, take those and put them into a sieve and give it a good wash, 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 wash. Lay it out on paper towels, pat it all dry. But yeah, for whatever reason, leeks get extra dirty. Uh, probably if they're green onions, they would get dirty. You know, it's just that they get more dirt because they're extra big. So here's the thing. It's perfect and it's done almost 
So I'm turning off the heat. And we just need to bring this over here and settle it down. Guys, maybe I could have just cooked the bacon on here during the live stream. Look how much time we've got. I have more things to gossip about. Oh, the tea. Actually, it's not tea. It's good stuff. So, But this is tea. Let's see. Oh, and uh, Carrie says, yes, the leaks are really dirty. You should have seen when he was working in the produce at Walmart. Yeah, I bet. So, okay. Anyways, I pre-opened my can of coconut milk because that way we don't have to listen to my uh, opener. So I'm just, you just let this come down a little bit. You don't want it to be boiling when we do this step. But this step, oh, the broth has been all absorbed into that cauliflower and the leeks. The leeks are all soft and tender. The bacon was nice and browned. And then now that has uh, added its flavor and everything. Mm. So now we take our coconut cream. Like you guys, what did I tell you? Like super stupid easy, right? And now we're going to just stir this in and let it kind of melt for a couple minutes. If you find that it's cooled down too much, just turn your heat back on very, very low and warm it back up. But my stuff was like super, super hot. So just getting it all mixed together to well combine. Mm. I don't know about you guys, but I love the way coconut smells. Like, I know people used to complain, like, about, like, that suntan lotion and the coconut smell. Like, I love that. Uh, Rocky Mountain Girl is asking if, uh, is saying that her hubby doesn't like coconut, would heavy whipping cream work as well? It sure would. Um, I will say, though, that uh, the heavy cream will... Add a different flavor profile, so you might want to up your seasonings a little bit. Uh, maybe add in, and maybe add in a couple herbs. So because the coconut actually adds like this creamy sweetness that plays off lovely with all that onion. So, uh, but absolutely, you could use coconut cream. You could add in a little bit of cream cheese to this. But when I show you, I think you can. I mean. I don't know if I can quite do it, but yeah, you can see it's thick, like with a double C. So, I, mm, all I smell is that lovely, mm, it's just really, really fragrant. Uh, unfortunately, there is no such thing as smell of vision but I wish there was so that you could uh, really get that experience. But... Absolutely, and heavy cream will be lovely if you wanted. If you use the heavy cream, the other thing you could add in that would be nice. It's just that it's weird with coconut. Uh, it would be like a bit of a grated or shredded parmesan. That would be awesome as well. Let's see. Oh, Carrie says he can drink this tea. Awesome! I'm glad to hear that. So two things here. I am gonna pour my tea. so that I can let it cool a little bit and uh, then drink it. And you can see it's pretty lightly cut. Oops, let me leave it in the camera so you can see. You can kind of see it's more golden there. See if it's too hot. Mm. Perfect. So let's see. Uh, Mike says, uh, leeks grown in uh, sandy soil. Yes, the, sand, the soil is, is rather, it's extra dirty dirt. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, uh, Rocky, uh, Air Fry Annie says that uh, Mike is very picky. Yes, he is, but aren't we all in just a little bit? And then uh, Carrie says, Emerald would, o o would always talk about uh, bringing Smell-O-Vision. Oh, nice. Let's see, Smell-O-Vision would be amazing. Yeah, and... That's right, Carrie, uh, marigolds do not contain caffeine. So, uh, but you guys know that I enjoy my beverages. And so while I just let this get a more comfy uh, eating temperature, I will tell you what my cool beverage is today. 
not so sure that all the flavors blend. So maybe I'll set it to the side and finish it after I eat. But so I have my gamer subs tonight. Oh, because I haven't had my nootropic yet today and I wanted something uh, very sweet. This one, this gamer sucks. I'm gonna come around. Is I don't know if I can really get do it justice there. It's uh, it's called snake oil. It doesn't want to focus in on it. The lights are uh, going off of it. Anyways, it this gamer sucks is called snake oil, but what it actually is is apple flavored, and I'm telling you. It tastes like I'm drinking an apple pie a la mode. It is so, so delicious. And so, like I said, some days I have my keto brains and some days I have my uh, gamer subs because, well, I'm a gamer. But uh, if you ever wanted to drink a glass of apple pie, I'm just saying, oh, my gosh. And it... Uh, this is high in vitamin C. It has less than one gram total carbohydrates. It has vitamin D, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, and uh, and biotin. And then it has L-theanine, L-tyrosine, uh, uh, poly polyhydro uh, hydrolene, co co CoQ10, acacia berry extract. Uh, mangosteen extract uh, and uh, goji extract and uh, ginseng root extract. It also has erythritol, malic acid, citric acid, uh, sucralose, caramel color, acequalin K, uh, silica, and beta carotene for color. So uh, again, like I said, I just really uh, and uh, oh, and the nootropic blend which is proprietary, which it would be. But I I'm just I enjoy them so much. They're, they're just one of my favorites. I love the gamer subs. Um, and I'll show you because sometimes you'll look at it and you'll be like, this little teeny canister and it's like almost $40, what? But let me show you. The serving is a quarter teaspoon. And this little canister has 100 servings in it. So, you know, it seems like it's really high price, but actually it's very, it's not bad if you are having things like this. Uh, it's certainly on par, if not a little bit cheaper than some of the other drinks that we have. So, you know, I don't feel bad about it. Now, don't go crazy. You don't got to buy every flavor, uh, you know, or anything like that. You don't have to buy it at all if you don't want to. But I love, when I find things that I like, I like to share it. If I don't like it, I like to complain about it. So, you know, everything with a grain of salt. So let's have dinner, shall we? Get myself a serving. I don't know if this will look like much on the camera, but I'll bring it up for you. Because everything is very pale colored except for the bacon. And my camera doesn't want to seem to focus on the up close stuff. Let's see. Here we go. So there is our bacon and onion and leek coconut soup, creamy leek soup. And it is, in fact, very thick. Should have put it on the spoon while I was at the camera. Get more sauce. Mm. Oh, my word, it's so good. So, yeah, there we go. There's our soup for the night. Keto Simple says it looks like sausage gravy or oatmeal. Yeah, that makes sense to me. It is about that texture, but the flavor is just uh, amazing. Uh, Barely Begun says he did end up getting a couple of the gamer subs. He likes it. It's easier when you want something besides water or coffee uh, and uh, other than uh, and not having uh, canned drinks on hand. Oh, wow. Hey, I'm glad that you uh, you tried it out. So 
let's see, Marion Roberts says, if you drink uh, Keto Brains, there's a sale ending at midnight, 20% off with code and uh, uh, friends of MHS. Oh, nice. Hey, uh, either Attila or Airfront Auntie, if one of you can copy that code and uh, post it so that it's easy to know, to see in the comments, that would be awesome. Just do a call out there for the Keto Brains. We have a lot of Keto Brains right now because when I signed up, I used a discount on a three, three bag subscription and I put the subscription cycle too close together. So it came way before we needed it. So I'm like, well, I need to skip the next shipment because we have like four bags right now. So that's too much Keto Brains, <laughs> but it's all right. We'll use it. And that's the important thing is that we will use it and it'll be great uh, taking on to the conventions and stuff like that. So hmm. Hmm. it was really good. So, well, like I said, yeah, originally this turn, this uh, was a vegan recipe that I used to love. It wasn't vegan, but we were, we did do a time where we tried some vegetarianism and also pescatarianism. And I'm just going to tell you that, uh, with that one, you had the options of, like I said, because you didn't do bacon first, you could, before you put the leeks in, you could blend the broth and the cauliflower. But I find that it just, I don't know how to explain, but uh, sort of like if you were a person who ate at uh, Panera Bread and, you know, for some reason they always want to make copycat recipes of their broccoli cheese soup, but for me, it's super off-putting because it's almost gelatinous and globular from all of the xanthan gum that they use. And I just cannot. I just cannot deal with that texture. And this is really thick and creamy, uh, bordering on custardy, without having to do that blending. And then I get like the texture of the uh, grated up cauliflower, almost like a ricey texture, and it blends real nice with the leeks. So that is why that is my preference like i said but if you like the the uh, the super smooth and thick then cook the bacon up take the bacon out then cook the cauliflower and uh and the broth take that and blend it then mix your bacon and your leeks back in and let it all simmer for a while but i, I just know can do let's see oh Let's see, uh, Carrie uh, coming up with some more more jokes. And let's see, Marion says she still has one uh, new new bag but couldn't resist the deal. Yeah, that's a great deal. Uh, like I said, just like right at the moment, uh, yeah, we definitely have too much keto brains, which is uh, almost painful to say because they are awesome. But then again, I have to say, think about it. Uh, I liked it enough that I put it on the subscribe uh, because I intend to continue using it. It's not a one-off like a, like the mushroom coffee, which I have to say made me even angrier at that everyday dose because everything is a huge sale. And in order to cancel it, it was next to, it was so hard, you guys. They made me wait like 13 days. And then even then they were like, are you sure? And then they, and then they, then they said, hey, we want to just, and they sent me an email and they said, we know you canceled your subscription, but we just need you to validate that you're going to cancel it because we don't want you to miss out. And I'm like, you need to cancel this already. One more penny comes out of my account and we're going to have some words and they're not going to be nice ones. So, yeah. So I definitely, uh, even though it tasted fine, because of the way they're super hardcore sales, uh, and the pushiness, I have to say, I cannot recommend the everyday dose because you can't, it's just too hard to get out of it. I mean, it took me like, you know, several days. So let's see. Keto Simple says he used mushroom instant coffee for a month mixed in his normal coffee. I'm not sure if he noticed anything or not. Yeah, the everyday dose is, a, is another nootropic. So, and it's, uh, it's fine. It's fine. It actually, it didn't taste bad. And... Had it not been so hard and so, so, so insane about the heavy pressure sales, I might have continued to get some of it. So, but, but 
absolutely just it was like i felt like i was getting mlm a high pressure even though it's not an mlm but you know what i mean about that super aggressive nature and yeah i just cannot attila says they had to hire the old cancellation department from aol yes i don't know i think aol was easier and then the, uh, the warden says, yeah, she got weird vibes from them at KetoCon. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, but I mean, the product itself was fine and, in fact, even tasty. So I'll have to say they actually lost a customer because, uh, because of their sales tactics. It really turned me off, as you can tell, because I've ranted for like five minutes. Oh, Barely Begun says he still has some AOL discs uh, propping up an end table. Mm. Mm. Our friend Annie says, perhaps they've had too many special mushrooms. <laughs> I don't think so, but uh, like I said, and I know that that's a thing to do. And it's very popular. I don't know why I'm stirring that. I'm just going to put it away after the live stream. It is really good. But uh, I don't know. Like I said, it just turned me off. So, all right. So what's the, let's see. Carrie says, back in the day, they would say AOL was always offline. Something, it, it did have, but you know what, back in the day, it was all we had, and back then, it was good. Anyways, apple pie a la mode in a glass. Delicious. Um, so, let's see. Keto Simple says, Gold's Gym took him forever to cancel because they didn't have any locations anymore, in, and he couldn't get... Uh, anyone on the phone so we had to email the ceo wow that's crazy see marion roberts says her university bought the old aol call center in jacksonville and the warden says she keeps getting mushroom ads in her facebook feed not sure how that happened i don't know but maybe we'll put them back up there again too when we make the stroganoff which is full of mushrooms <laughs> um but yeah so Air Friday, he says, uh, they used to ask us, you've been online for nine weeks. Do you wish to stay online? Of course. I live online from the very beginning. I love the internet right from the very start. Hmm. So I lost track of what I was saying. I had a little fiber from a leak in my, in my mouth. So that is one thing, too. That just happens sometimes. So anyways, um, I lost track of my thoughts, you guys. Oh, my important update. There will be much news to come. Exciting news, big news, great news. So all the drama oh, that I've been telling you guys with a former convention and stuff. And oh, my God, it's still carrying on. And I just cannot. I was like, no, nah, I'm done with this. I, I can't do it. I don't want to deal with them. If they're dead to me, it's gone from from my mind. And it is. But I got together with some friends. And those friends are amazing people. And they have put their boots on the ground. And new convention will be coming. New convention, not a keto convention, a nerd convention, a pop culture convention. So... You know, I know that that will appeal not to a ton of you, but to some of you it might. And if nothing else, it's my nerdly adventures. So there will be lots and lots of big announcements soon. But uh, we are only putting that much information out because we want people to know the direction that we're heading. And uh, it's it's completely, it's its own new entity. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with old conventions or other organizations or other anything else. It's all brand spanking new, which is why we are not uh, uh, putting out the name yet because we still have a lot of uh, legal buttons and paperwork to do, but soon, and it's gonna be, I'm just like, I am excited because it's full of positivity and that is what I've been looking for this whole time. Uh, not stress, not, you know, I mean, there's going to be stress whenever there's a lot of work, but uh, 
the black cloud that was there is not there anymore. And I am super, super excited. Uh, we are affectionately calling it uh, Project New Game Plus. Um, and that's not the real name, but that's what it is for now, just as the placeholder until we have everything done. So, uh, Sharon says, nerd, nerd, nerd. Uh, yeah, I, I need that in a Miriam voice too. That would be awesome. But so that's the good news today. That's the good news. We're making a lot of progress on it and thrilled beyond belief. Okay, that bite was a little big, but it's really good. So now, as far as other conventions, never let it be said that I was going to slow down. So I will be taking the Catan National Qualifier to Hoosier Con in Indianapolis, and that's at the end of March. And uh, if you like board games, Hoosier Con, it's W-H-O-S-Y-E-R-C-O-N. Uh, they are amazing. It's, a, it's not expensive to get the ticket. It's like uh, 50, 50 bucks to attend. And it is all board games all the time. Every board game that you can imagine. It's just people who love board games. And then also there's parties. Like I believe Barfleet goes there. I don't know if they're going this year, but yeah. So I can say it on my channel, but we're not doing a heavy ad for it because, uh, uh, well, a hotel room only holds so many people. But yes, I will be at Keto Palooza this year uh, once again. But there is no more Patreon, so there's not a Patreon dinner on Thursday night. Uh, people do like to arrive on Thursday. And so I want to make sure that everybody is invited, if you are coming in on Thursday, to come to my uh, suite. And we'll have charcuterie, coffee, tea. Uh, feel free to bring something to exchange. You know I'll have seltzer. And then uh, Tito Semple says, Thursday night at KPL, he's been roped into the Brazilian Steakhouse by James. Well, that's just been uh, uh, good. Uh, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it. I don't like that Brazilian Steakhouse. The meat is okay, uh, but it was hard for me to enjoy my beverage. And I ordered a cappuccino that was very expensive and there it was a crimes against cappuccinos italians are shedding tears i'm just saying it was not good and i honestly i felt like that they were even though when i went it wasn't busy i felt like they were spacing it out a whole bunch in an effort to try and get us to not eat so much and to get out so and i know it's an opportunity for a lot of people but uh it's not the opportunity for me. So let's see. Oh, and Sharon says there might be fudge on Thursday night from Air Fry and Auntie and herself. Also, Keto Simple, you can let me know, uh, you know, after dinner or whatever. But uh, this is, it's a, it's a smaller collective. Uh, Autumn wants me to make sure that we know that this is not an official Keto Palooza event. So it's not to be announced on the Keto Palooza group. Uh, that's a that's a big deal, uh, she says, because in the past, uh, people have just gotten too out of hand. And she says, uh, so she doesn't want to do that. And I get that because the first year that they did the big Brazilian steakhouse, it was ridiculous. And I just was like, I'm not doing it again. Absolutely not. And then someone else took out the mantle. But uh, yeah, and, and I don't know, man. Uh, most of it was really wonderful. And then there was like a small subset of people that I was like, what, uh, what did your mom forget to teach you? Because goodness. Yeah. But I, and I just like, I oh, am. Yeah. Nope. So let's see. But anyways, after dinner, you can always come by if it's not real late. Depends on what time you're coming. Also, you know, maybe before dinner, you don't know, could be all kinds of things. Uh, Marion says she liked it. She went on Thursday with James and M. Oh, nice. Okay. So, 
but uh, so for me, but there are a lot of really cool restaurants down there. I want to make effort to try some of the other places and uh, it, just like some of the stuff that I didn't get to go do. Also, I feel that if I have the funds and I want to go to a really nice fancy dinner, you know, where I have to like wear nice clothes and stuff. Uh, I want to go to Jeff Ruby's there on the corner by the Galt House. So the original Jeff Ruby's in Cincinnati, Ohio is outstandingly delicious. Oh, it is amazing. But uh, the one in Columbus, the Jeff Ruby, it's good. But not as good as the one in Cincinnati, but it's every bit as expensive, if not a little more. So I was like, mm, I don't know. So I, I don't know about that. But uh, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of places. I also want to go to that burger restaurant that has all the different meats and try. I, I mean, I know I can't eat more than one burger, but maybe oh, if, if someone wants, if someone goes with me, we could buy like two or three burgers and split them and try the different meats like a kangaroo burger or, you know, make sure that make sure we have buffalo. I know buffalo is more common, but, you know, they have all kinds of stuff. They have alligator, you know, all, all the meats they've got in burger form. And I think that sounds fun or interesting. Even if I don't like it, I think it's worth the experience. I love experiences. Um, I'll, I'll have to look it up because I can't remember the name and I can't look it up right now because my keyboard is way over there. So. Hmm. And then when I was, uh, I had to go to uh, Target and just over the bridge, there was like a barbecue joint. And so I love barbecue. So I want to do that. When, uh, Air Fry Nanny says she's game if she, if I don't uh, heat her out with the chilies. Oh, we we can do that. We don't. We absolutely don't have to have spicy. Spicy can be on the side or for something else. Uh, Brenda wants to know how far from Cincinnati is KPL. Maybe she can go, uh, but stay with her daughter in Cincy. Uh, it's not too far from Cincy, but it is like a a, a little bit of a jump. Uh, so. But yeah, you could probably do that. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't have a good uh, scale. I feel like uh, when I'm going across the bridge from Cincinnati into Kentucky, I feel like yeah, I'm not too far. But I do know like it's still like another hour or so, hour and a half. Oh, Marion's game too. Okay, well I'll get the information together and put it out there. Hmm. All right, so. That's what I was telling you about my conven the conventions I'm going to and what we're up to. So, uh, other than uh, so Hoosier Con, and then the, then we hit then we have a little bit of time in April, and then it starts to get insane because in May I'm gonna hit uh, Buckeye Game Fest. Now Buckeye Game Fest is near and dear to my heart. It's a teeny, 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 tiny uh, board game convention. And when I say teeny, tiny, I mean like 600 people is a lot of people to go to Buckeye Game Fest. Uh, they have a board game library uh, that they borrow from our one of our local gaming clubs, uh, Columbus Area Board Gaming Society, affectionately called CABS. And they bring their entire library, which is twice the size of mine. Whereas if I have 650 games, they've got 1,700 games. So it's a lot of games. But uh, the other thing is that uh, Buckeye Game Fest is also going to have a Catan tournament. And so since I have a lot of support stuff for Catan and a, a national qualifier, I'm going to bring that with me to Buckeye Game Fest and help them out as well. Uh, we are also going to do... A tournament uh, for on Friday night for Cascadia, which is a go a game made by Flat Out Games, uh, partnered by or well uh, published by uh, AEG Alderac Entertainment Gaming. Uh, it's complicated. I don't really know. Like they're the manufacturer, but Flat Out Games is the owner of the IP and uh, the the uh, and the game. So 
it's a but anyways we're gonna do that and my super amazing extra awesome uh magic the gathering uh, people uh they are gonna bring their magic uh stuff to uh buckeye game fest and uh run magic there so that'll be amazing because i'm excited because we didn't have our usual winter con and we've got that power cube if you don't play magic the gathering a power cube is like a thousand dollars so not everybody can just like go and be like well yeah i want a power cube uh good luck to you but so we have one and take it and then people uh, can play up to 12 people. Uh, Carrie says he went to went one day to the local mom and pop comic store he has, and in the back they have a room for just gaming, and it's huge. He's not really a gamer, but he had to check it out. Yeah, you know, you might try some. They've got so much of variety now. Uh, long gone are the days of Sari and Monopoly, you know, which, you know, don't get me wrong, they have their places, but... Uh, I feel like now at this point there's like a something for everything because you can play really simple quick fast games with good tight rules you can play long hours and hours and hours games that are really complex and hurt your brain it's a lot of variety now anyways sorry i had to take a drink of my apple pie oh so after buckeye game fest then we have, oh, there's something else in there. Oh, Marcon. Marcon is a tiny uh, sci-fi convention. And uh, our uh, cosplay guild uh, helps with a uh, masquerade, they call it, which is where all of the people who've dressed up in cosplay uh, gets to show it off. And we ask them questions and all of that stuff. Uh, sometimes we have a little prize for a uh, popular vote for the best for the most amazing uh, cosplay. Um, oh, I feel like there's more. Marcon, Buckeye Game Fest, and then Origins Game Fair. That's a large one here in Columbus. Uh, that's run by Gamma, which is the is a game uh, manufacturers association. And that's about a uh, 13, 14,000 attendee uh, convention. So we go there, and there I am a volunteer for a LARP organization that's live action role play uh, called AmpGuard, and I teach crafting courses. Uh, this year I'm organizing all of the crafting classes with a partnered person who is a full fledged uh, uh, member of AmpGuard. And so that's exciting. I'm going to teach how to make a wire wrap D20 necklace. So awesome stuff. And a D20 leather bag, so all kinds of cool stuff. And once we hit that Origins, then we have Gen Con, um, Gen Con, Matsuri Con, and then Con on the Cob, and then finally Keto Palooza. So that is my year of conventions. That's a lot of conventions. I'm gonna be tired. Uh, Marion says she only has the Keto Orlando Summit and Keto Palooza this year. You know what, though? That's a, that's still two uh, really hearty conventions, so uh, that sounds awesome to me. Oh, I thought I sent you a picture, Air Fry Andy. Oh, my goodness. I am sorry. I will, I will dig it up. I took a nice picture of it because it is stunning. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, a game that I wanted really, really bad, I had put it on my gift exchange wish list, Tokaido, and uh, Air Fry Auntie got it and sent it to me. I was I'm like out of my world excited over it, and I made a few people play uh, way too much. So, <laughs> Air Fry Auntie says, Con on the Cob sounds corny. Well, let me tell you, it is. It is ridiculously deli uh, fun. And uh, the person who runs it is an artist, and he also has written several books and developed a role-play game system uh, called Low Life. It's ridiculous. It's so silly. It's the best fun. So I really enjoy uh, Con on the Cob a lot because it's also teeny tiny, like you know, three, uh, like 400 people maybe. So I appreciate that so much. Uh, you really get to get some one-on-one -on -one time with people and get to know people. So all of that stuff. Carrie's asking me how buttery is caught on the cob, but I'm going to say, like, you know what? 
that's a different convention and not the one I'm going to. <laughs> so, all right. Hmm. My tea is suddenly uh, the perfect temperature. Air fried anti, yes, 400 people is teeny tiny. And then, but you know what? All of these conventions that I'm going to, can I just tell you guys? And that's not a complaint. Hey, Brenda, nice to see you. Keto Palooza is the most expensive. Even Gen Con, the is is a their ticket is $175 this year. So I'm like, well. So, but I mean, and that is not a complaint. It's just one of those things of like different uh different audiences. And so venues up give different uh cost requirements to people putting on the show and of course the size is a di is is also a thing i mean let's face it gen con has uh 70 to eighty thousand people and i believe brings indianapolis some uh i don't remember like well it's a double digit millions of dollars in business a year so uh pretty much the hotels are like we're gonna be booked to capacity uh, and from, uh, and not just one hotel, every hotel from the center of Indianapolis all the way out to Plainfield and beyond. Uh, there's no hotel rooms. Everything is booked. Uh, all of the restaurants are slammed to the gills. So obviously, uh, the price is lower per person. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Air Fry Nanny says she'll pay the Keto Palooza price. It's worth it to see her Keto family. Absolutely. Well, like I said, it was not a complaint. It's just like uh, those factors that make that make venues charge differently. Yeah. So I always feel like, man, Autumn has to really bust her hump to make it happen. And it is a high value from a intrinsically rewarding aspect. So that's, that's the thing is there's a it, you know, I just want to be clear. There was not a complaint. I was just like, uh, you know, my nerd numbers and stuff like that makes a difference to me. If, if Autumn had 80,000 people, uh, not only will we not fit in the Galt anymore, we'd fill up the Galt, the Aloft, and every hotel in downtown Louisville and uh, probably all the way up to Lexington. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. So I think it's, uh, Keto Palooza is one of my favorite events simply because I get to see people that I uh, care about. So there we go. And on that note, uh, my soup is getting cold. So I'm going to go eat my dinner. And I'm excited for upcoming new opportunities. I look to put out another video update in the not too far future. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.